in this uh, session let's start uh, looking at uh, the capital budgeting from the dimensions of the valuations and probably how how do i take accept or reject decisions for different kinds of capital projects how do i get into the valuation processes or npv and irr computation processes for different kinds of capital projects and what are the various uh, mechanisms that are eval uh, that are available to evaluate the capital projects these are some of the major elements that we would be looking and just to give a small uh, overview whenever we talk about uh, capital budgeting it involves a long term cash flows right probably i am investing very heavily today but the cash flows out of that particular investment the benefits out of those investments will be over a slightly uh, longer period of time beyond one financial year and generally uh, we look at uh, uh, doing this kind of capital budgeting analysis either for expanding our business or replacing existing uh, products or uh, equipment or probably uh, some kind of uh, uh, some kind of uh, pet projects of the senior management uh, or some kind of uh, society related uh, projects which are more mandatory all these things can come under uh, the capital budgeting uh, process right uh, the uh, looking at uh, the various uh, types of capital budgeting uh, projects that are available now our focus is to get into how do i really evaluate the worthiness of these capital budgeting projects how do i evaluate the worthiness of these capital budgeting projects so if it is an expansion project how do i look at it or if it is a, a, a replacement project how do i evaluate the worthiness of that project so these are some of the things that we are going to look at in this session so with that as a base let's jump into it so whenever we are trying to evaluate any capital project we try to work out three different calculations one what is the initial outlay means how much did we uh, really invest or what what is the initial investment in the project then find out regular cash flows annual or whatever are the period we are looking at regular annual cash flows that we are going to get from the operations so find out that particular number and the third one is the terminal non operating cash flow the reason is at the end of the project we are no more going to operate the project whatever are the assets that we are left with or whatever uh, uh, whatever uh, the the products or equipment we are left with we are going to sell that off and get some cash flows out of it so that's where we call it as terminal non operating cash flows and probably after tax even this annual cash flows is post tax even this cash flows is post tax so wherever we are evaluating any capital project we look at these three types of cash flows and uh, and then uh, uh, evaluate uh, by finding out the npv or irr of the project if i typically look at an expansion project so the initial outlay will be the investment that i am making in fixed cost which is uh, purchasing some fixed uh, assets like machines or uh, equipments so whatever is the fixed cost i am incurring plus 
whatever is the investment in the net working capital the investment uh, in the net working uh, capital is nothing but the change in the non cash current assets minus the change in the non debt current liabilities so that is what we are calling as net working capital investment right whatever is the change in the current assets minus uh, the change in the current liabilities which does not include the short term debts that is what uh, we are calling as net working capital investment so <coughs> if that change is positive it means i definitely require additional financing so it becomes a cash outflow but if it is negative it becomes a cash inflow right so probably it's like saying the last year the current assets are 20000 and now the current assets are 25000 means there is an increase in the current assets which will decrease the cash by 5000 all right now the current liabilities last year were 30000 now they have become 35000 or 40000 so there is an increase in the current liabilities by 10000 so there is a cash increase by 10000 cash decrease by 5000 cash increase by 10000 the change in the working capital for me is nothing but there is an increase by 5000 the current assets have increased by 5000 current liabilities have increased by 10000 so the difference is negative minus 5000 which is what uh, is saying that the cash is generated in the project so the working capital net working capital investment is uh, uh, it's a cash inflow uh, whereas if this comes out to be positive i say that it is a net cash outflow so that's one thing we would be doing and whenever we are talking about regular cash flows what we typically uh, see in regular uh, cash flows revenues minus expenses and whatever uh, uh, see i require post tax cash flows so what becomes revenues minus expenses minus depreciation actually will give me ebit right but out of this ebit i should add back the depreciation but on this ebit let's assume there is no interest so this itself will become ebt and tax is applied on ebt but what should happen the tax should uh, when i am adding back the cash flows i am adding back the depreciation but the depreciation that i have to add back when i am adding ebit plus depreciation or it's as good as uh, saying uh, revenues minus uh, whatever this the tax rate that is applied ebit into 1 minus t plus the depreciation because i have to uh, pay the tax on this particular uh, portion so ebit into 1 minus t plus depreciation will become my regular cash flows and when it comes to terminal so at the end of the period i am selling off all the assets so it depends on the salvage value i get my net working capital back and if at all the salvage value is more than the book value means every year actually i am depreciating the asset by some amount and by depreciating it by some amount i am getting a tax benefit because my expenses are increasing my profits are decreasing which will release uh, result in a lesser amount of tax so i am getting a tax benefit of dt every year i am getting a tax benefit of dt every year whereas whereas when i am uh, talking about uh, selling it at more than the book value it means whatever the tax benefit that i have got i have to forego to that extent of excess so that's where i am subtracting the tax and finding out the terminal non operating cash flows 
and similarly whenever i am looking at a replacement project also the only differences i may have to look at is in the replacement the initial outlay will also include probably the old equipment that is sold off the benefit that i am getting or the post tax benefit that i am getting by selling off the old equipment sometimes i may sell it at a profit which are probably i may sell it at uh, something lesser than the book value also but whatever it is i will get that particular cash flow also as a part of initial outlay sometimes it may decrease the initial outlay by that much uh, extent of benefit i am getting by selling that uh, new uh, old equipment and same way whenever i am talking about regular cash flows my focus is not just on the new machines uh, cash flows but also but more on the incremental cash flows if at all the old machine was there what were the revenues by whereas if at all the new machine is brought in what is the excess the excess of revenues excess of cost with the new machine is going to bring compared to the old machine so only the deltas only the incremental values of revenues expenses everything are considered when we are doing the valuation of a, a replacement kind of a project so what we should uh, now look at is take up one example let's say for uh, expansion project as well as for uh, replacement project and uh, try to uh, find out the worthiness of the project uh, using the npv as well as irr analysis for that all right see sometimes we typically uh, uh, say let let me just go through something how does depreciation play a role in terms of cash flows okay let's assume revenues expenses depreciation so let me assume revenues in two methods are 100 the expenses fixed as well as variables are also same in both of them let me assume that this is an accelerated depreciation method whereas this is a straight line depreciation so let me assume here depreciation is 25 whereas here the depreciation is 10 so from here i will get my operations profit or ebit right i'll get ebit as 25 whereas here the ebit is 40 and similarly when i am taking out uh, the interest interest for simplicity purpose let me assume zero in both the cases so ebt is 25 and 40 assume that the tax is for simplicity purposes around 40% so tax is 10 making the net income is 15 here and 40% is 16 bringing the net income of 24 and now when i have to uh, find out the after tax cash flows post tax cash flows in both of them <coughs> what is the cash flow here ebit into 1 minus t so 25 is the operating profit into 1 minus t tax rate is 40% so 0.6 plus the depreciation which is working out to 25 into 0.6 is 15 uh, 15 plus uh, 25 40 is the post tax cash flows here whereas when i am going with uh, the straight line mechanism ebit 40 into 1 minus t 24 plus 10 34 is the post tax cash flows here 24 plus 10 post tax cash flows here is 34 whereas in this case it is 40 which mean if i am using an x because the tax that is going up in this method the tax is much much lesser whereas in this method the tax is higher which mean the post tax cash flows in the straight line method are lesser by 6 compared to post tax cash flows using an accelerated depreciation method so that is what we are trying to uh, talk of here though we are saying depreciation is a non cash expense but because of the tax that is involved it may so happen that my after tax cash flows will be different and they will be higher if 
an accelerated depreciation method is used because of lower taxes compared to when a, uh, when a straight line or conservative kind of a